essentially I've run design departments in Fortune 500 companies for 20, well now 30 years. Everything from Swatch Watch to Coach to Fashion to um, Calvin Klein. But what I realized about 10 years ago is it really boiled down to human potential and people. When I, I was an art major and psychology minor, and when I started watching what made something truly innovative, um, what was creativity, it was all about the people that made it happen. And so I really began to focus on how I could not only inspire my teams, but work with them differently. And about 10 years ago, I got really brave in marrying what I had studied on the outside, which is sound and vibration and well-being and healing, with the corporate world. And I'll give you an example. Um, those times when you get, you know, people always said I was a creative person that had my left and right brain intact. And those ideas that I would get, you know, the moments that you think sometimes come from above, those aha moments, I found out through studying at the Center for Human Consciousness was really around when your left and right brain come together. So I worked with a Dr. Jeff Thompson to ask him if he could create a series of tapes that literally exercise the muscle, just like you exercise this muscle. Could you exercise the muscles of the right and left brain coming together? Um, and he created a series, he's designed a sound chair, and he created a series of tapes with binial beats that, because it's, um, the beats are alternating, in order to hear the music, your brain has to, both halves have to put it together. So usually what I do is I wait until I'm in a company two or three years and prove myself and have some credibility, and then I go for the wild stuff. Um, because being head of creative departments, I feel like um, what's important is that you deliver the end result, but how we get the job done is a creative exercise in itself. I took my own money and bought a bunch of these sound chairs, um, found some closets that I could hide them in, and asked for 20 volunteers of my creative department that would be willing to listen to these CDs three times a week, 20 minutes a day. Um, and what I knew, I knew enough, because I walk in both worlds, the corporate world and the creative world, that I would have to prove that this worked. So I found that there's a creativity test that you can give, um, which really breaks down creativity to ability to take abstract parts and put them together, reasoning. And it's a 20 minute test. I had the 20 people take it. Um, six weeks later after, you know, designers, it was great. They'd literally go into the closet, close the door, you know, sign up. No one knew I was doing this listen to their CD, come back out. After six weeks, we readministered the test and quote unquote creativity increased 18%, which was huge for a creative department. Anything over 10% is considered significant. So I go to one of my staff meetings with the president of the company and she goes around the room and says, what's going on in your area, your area? So I roll out this Gantt chart, because again, I know how to speak the corporate language and it shows big bar graphs with, I increased creativity this month by 18%. And she said, well, what did you do? Did you fire people, hire people, get a new headhunter? I said, no, I bought some sound chairs and let people listen to CDs and here's my receipt. I want my money back now. <laughs> um, and so it worked, but I'm smart enough to know that if you, you, know, you need to do something like that and prove it. Um, so gaining confidence, the next thing I did um, was to start this group, Project Platypus, that I'm not gonna explain in the time I have, but keeping on the track of explaining how I've brought sound and vibrational work into the company, this group of 12 people that I picked from all different aspects of the company, finance, strategy, design, that worked together for three months to create new brands in a totally new way of working together, um, really taught them how to co-create using systems theory. One of the things I did was to bring in my sound guy again. And I know that there's a place when you're truly creative and when you're working in teams where the team is just in the zone together. I don't know if you've ever felt that, but all of a sudden things are clicking and people are building in ideas and sometimes it could take days for that to happen, sometimes weeks. And I thought, okay, my commitment to the CEO was I was gonna create brands in three months that would be $50 million or more. I have no time to wait till people connect and gel um, and get into the zone. So how am I gonna accelerate that? process. So I had Dr. Jeff Thompson come in again, take these 12 people that came from disparate parts of the company, and he found on his computer the place at which each of them resonates. So for example, um, if, you know, you, we asked each of them to just go, ah, and he recorded it on his spectrometer, I think it was, and he found among these 12 people one particular frequency that everyone was able to hit. 
And then he recorded that frequency, and he um, put it up a couple of octaves, down a couple of octaves, and made me a CD which represented the place at, with, at which these particular 12 people resonated. And if you hear it, it sounds like Gregorian chants. Um, the cool thing is what I would do every morning as I'd run these three-month sessions when we were going into idea generation is play this CD in the background. It was not brainwashing. Um, but what it did is if you understand the concept of entrainment, you know, which is where cuckoo clocks will swing their pendulum after hanging out together, they all swing the same way. It was getting this group of 12 people on the same frequency immediately. So getting to that place of harmony um, where then we could all start to build on each other's ideas. I looked at it as a jump start kit um, to success. And so what's really cool is every group of 12, because Project Platypus was every three months a new group of 12 would come through, we have a different CD that is that group's frequency. Um, so I really believe that whereas a lot of corporations talk about innovation and creativity and bring in big process charts, my belief is it's so much about setting the field for uh, innovation to happen in terms of the connections and relationships between people. And if that field isn't properly set, I don't care what you do, but innovation will not happen. So I really um, worked hard at creating ways to set up those relationships and prepare the field for the great um, innovation to occur. There was another sequence with um, Old Navy, I just moved 120, I was moving the design studios from New York to San Francisco, and we had no time, there was gonna be 80 new designers and 30 old designers. And I knew how important it was going to be for these people to connect in order to create together. So I hired a documentary filmmaker that made five minute modules of them speaking, it was almost like a, um, a yearbook, them talking into the camera about things that probably would have taken us years to know about them, their hobbies, um, and what it, I gave every person a CD. So after you were in a meeting with someone, you could go back to the CD and click on their face like a yearbook and hear a streaming video about what was important to them, why they came to Old Navy. And it was amazing the connections that happened immediately. I really um, believe that Companies need to spend a lot more time understanding, yeah, relationships and setting a sense of trust and freedom. Because creativity really happens if there's freedom and trust. And we don't spend enough time setting those kind of relationships up before we request um, innovation out of our people. I would also bring in improvisational artists who would teach the teams how to truly build on each other's ideas. Because I don't believe um, traditionally when you say brainstorming in a company, people judge your ideas before you throw it on a table. And so the idea was to teach people how to not judge your ideas before you toss them out, but to truly build, be fearless, and have the freedom and trust to throw ideas out and let the other person build on it. So someone may say something that's silly, silly, stupid, silly, brilliant, silly, stupid, and it, collectively you come up with the answer. The other thing that I believe in innovation is we, you can't ask people to put output until you give them input. Um, we wouldn't ask that of a computer and we cannot ask that of a human being either. So before we start any project, I give my team the gift of information. Um, so for example, if at Mattel Toys we were designing toys that were supposed to be funny, um, for two weeks I would do, ask nothing of them but I found a professor of laughter, um, I found a clown, and I found um, people that could infuse them with the information, because I believe creativity is taking in information, rearranging it, connecting it in new ways, and spitting it back out. But if we don't give our people and companies the time to absorb the information, I don't know how we could expect of them new ideas to come out. So the fun would be, for those two weeks, trying to find the stimuli um, that would put the team in the right framework to then create. So thank you.